Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Wednesday out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM. The Sports Animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Did we rush to judgment of Sean and Leanne Tui? Some things starting to come out a little bit more about this situation with Michael Orr. I think we had a texter hit the nail right on the head yesterday or Monday, about why this is happening now. And it may not, they may not be quite as despicable human beings as the rush to judgment made them be. We can talk about that at the end. I I would like to hear from a a certain Ole Miss alum about this topic. I've talked to him about it. I want to hear him say Uh, it. Yeah, I don't think it would get him on here to... I don't think so. Talk about this topic. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know that they're the greatest of people. I'm not going to say that. But they may not be quite as bad as what was alleged in the media early on this week. I think a certain party releasing a book has a lot more to do with why we're talking about this than anything else. Maybe not quite as bad as we thought. ESPN's top 100 college football players. We'll get to that list today. Is Caleb Williams really the best player? And if not, somebody has to be. So who could that be if it's not him? Or maybe we just all think it is him. Big 12. Eesh. Who do you, have you looked at it yet? Of players? Yeah. The yeah. top 100 list? Yeah, I was kind of scrolling through it. Just looking for names that stood out. All right, so question on the text line. Who is the first Big 12 player? Who who do you, who is the best player in the Big 12, according to this list? And where will you find them on the list? A name that is not in the top 100 that I think a lot of people would be shocked by is Quinn Ewers. Not even in the list. Yet has the third best Heisman odds, if you look at right now, going into the year. that Those two things don't jive. I wonder why that is. Hmm. And some other things. Who's too high? Who's a guy that you think is too low, too high, and whatnot? We can just pick apart that list. It's a, it, I think it's cool that they do this for the college football. Um, U.S. Amateur. Stroke plays over. Match play bracket is set. What a disappointment. There were exactly 64 dudes that shot even par or better, which meant we didn't get to see like a 17 guy for five spot playoff. That stinks. That's one of the best parts of this thing is when you have all those guys play in one hole, you send them off and like three guys play the hole and then they just wait and wait and wait. Terrible break. Uh, a couple of you guys made it. A couple of local guys didn't. We'll talk about that. And then also... Do you, if you think you need a vacation, Jared, I have a person that we all know that is finally going to miss work, but her record of being there is Cal Ripken-esque. And what's sad is with her not being there, it might be one of the, one of the things from our childhood, maybe slowly fading away. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things. Whatever else might be on your mind, in or out of the world of sports, feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, there are a couple ways to stay in touch with the show live. You can log on to kadsam.com. You can download the app. The Paragon app is free, and it is awesome. It's got radio. It's got the Penny News, which a brand new ed- edition of that Penny News hit our website last night at midnight, thepennynews.com. 
You also you know, pick up a free copy of the print edition of the Penny News this evening. By tomorrow morning, you can get it at all your lo- favorite local newsstands. So that's the Penny News, brand new one out. Big Elk and Paragon TV. You can watch high school sports live stream there as well. Just uh, everything that we do encompassed in one app. And also, if you miss one of our shows entirely, you can go back and check it out because we have the podcast wherever podcasts drop. How are you, Jared? I am good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Enjoyed one more night of nice weather last night before the heat returns. Did you do that too? Yeah. I made a point to go outside and do things. I actually played in the the scramble last night. First time I played golf in like three and a half weeks because I... Oh, because of your athletic injury. Yeah, you know, there's that famous quote by John Daly when he talks about why have you been able to stay injury-free all these years? And he says, well, you can't pull fat. (laughs) Turns out you can. Yeah, I I did something to, like, pulled a little rib muscle or something, which was, I I couldn't, I just flat out couldn't play. Um, And so, I, uh, I finally did. No pain whatsoever. Didn't play very good, but at least, uh, at least I got to play. Well, I mean, and it was play. just absolute. You know, you don't you don't do this very often in Western Oklahoma, but there was a point there where you kind of wish the wind would blow a tick. Oh yeah, I mean, it's just so still that it got a little bit hot. Not terrible, just a little bit hot. Yeah, I, I noticed there's a big difference. That's where the shade comes in. There's if there's a if you're in the shade, it was a lot nicer than in the sun. Right. But now it's going to get hot again, so I'm glad you got to go out. Yeah, it was nice. It's, it's it, not going to happen this weekend, I don't think. Well, I'm, I'm sure some people will, but I mean, 104 or something like that'd that. That'd be too hot for me. Yeah. Did you see game day next week, next Friday? I've looked ahead. Have you seen this? No, I was wondering that, actually. Like 92. That's not too bad. Now, 92... In the central part of the state, no, out this, you could always yeah, add maybe. about another five degrees, it feels like. Be close to a hundo. But I think by the time kickoff, you know, it's going to be hot. It's going to be warm. Still, it's still August, but I think we'll be all right. Could be hotter. Did you happen to catch the Elkettes and Woodward softball game last night? I did not. Like I said, I was outside doing things, but I, um, I saw that they went to extras. Yeah, 15 of them. Wow. 15 innings. Unfortunately, like two games. unfortunately, for the second straight time in a week, the Elkettes came out on the losing end, five to four. They lost the finals of that tournament up there, three to two. Dang! I'd say those two teams are pretty evenly matched. I'd say it's so, man. That district between them and and I'm sure Weatherford, they always produce a good team. Haven't really been following how they've been doing so far. You know, it's weird because I haven't even seen a result yet. For Weatherford? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they're playing. Well, you'd think so. They're not I, posting results? I haven't seen one on the OSSAA rankings site. You know, because I like to run down those scores mm-hmm. at night mm-hmm. on the sports report. Right, right. I just haven't noticed them. Well, why not? Come on. People want to know. Efforting. Oh, the rankings page is slow. Anyhow, that's pretty crazy. And guess what? You could have watched it. Big Elk TV. Yeah. All 15 innings of it. I may go back and listen to that. I bet Dylan and Jay were oh, chewing well, their... A little, yeah. I bet they were chewing their fingernails off. A little nervous. All right, so do you have any idea what I'm talking about here with somebody that's getting a little bit of a, a vacation for the first time in I, I mean years? Yeah, they're, I they're don't. Five and one for Weatherford. Okay. I just missed their scores. So, I, you know. I don't know. I don't know. What's what's uh, who needs a vacation? Who's getting one? Vanna White. Oh yeah. How long do you think she's been doing the Wheel of Fortune? Uh well over forty years. Forty two. Forty two years. So she she contracted an illness and she's going to be off for five shows coming up. I mean they're obviously recorded already, but you won't see her. It was the first time in 30 years that she missed a day of work. Wow, that's impressive. She's only missed three in 42 years. That's impressive. And then she's going to be off of five shows coming up. Now, 
Correct me if I'm wrong. Their recording schedule, don't they do like? I think they do a bunch in a they day. They do it like three in a day, and they do that for a certain amount of time. Then they are off for months, and they come back and they do more, or they travel to wherever they're going and do more. But still, I mean, that's a that's a lot of it's a lot of work. It's a so lot. So is she? Has she decided if she's staying on? Well, the contract is being negotiated because obviously Pat retired. You know who took over? For Pat? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Ryan Seacrest, right? Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. So, or will be. I wonder when that is. Let's see, I was trying to think. I saw it just on the other day, and I think Pat was still there. Oh, we watched it last night. You did? Yeah, during dinner. Well, I know that she's in the contract negotiations, and I wonder if there's part of her that are like, you know what? I've done this for 42 years. The ends of my fingers are tired from touching the screen all the time. I mean, that's a lot of... I wonder how many steps she's put in. Someone's done the math, I'm sure. A lot of back and forth, the steps she... Back and forth on the board. You'd think our arches would hurt having to walk all that on in those, those heels. heels. Yeah. That's a, she's put in... I mean, her legs are toned. Yeah, I agree with Billy. Not going to be the same without Pat. And you know what? If I'm her, now, how much do you think she makes a year? Uh, not enough from what I've heard. I've heard that she was drastically underpaid. It's like she just figured it out. There's a joke in there somewhere. I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> you know how much she makes? No. $3 million a year. Oh, well, that's still pretty good. But how much did Pat make? Fifteen. Yeah, and she went for so long with like twenty years straight. She's made three. Paper. She's yeah. made three, and he's made tw uh, fifteen. But and she's gone this long without a pay raise. Did she know that was a thing? Or I don't know. She's found out though. Right. That's why she's the not contract happy. negotiations are happening. That is correct. 20 years. I wonder she's if mad at Pat for not telling her, but that's not his place to tell her how much he's making. I'll be honest with you. Who didn't realize that Pat and Vanna weren't a thing? Like outside of work. Didn't he always kind of... Like a, like a couple thing? Yeah. You know, at the end of the shows when they come together, I always felt like they were kind of friendly. Man. There's some scandal there. I'm sure that I'm sure that's been talked about for years and years. Yeah, N nothing's ever come of it. But I just don't. I, for me, Will of Fortune is Pat and Vanna. I don't think you can have one without the other. Well, that's all we've known. That's all. I mean, we've that's known. literally our lifetime. Yes. Yeah. Like no kidding. I'm 42. Yep. Pat's daughter will take her spot. Says Possum. Is there any truth to that? No clue. I don't know. Anyhow, great job, Vanna. Three days and 42 years. That is dedication to work. Uh, U.S. Amateur, stroke play is over. Match play is ready to roll. Ryder Cowan missed the uh, match play cut. He shot 78-75, uh, so he played two rounds, but uh, he, he's not going to make it into the match play. Either is Bobby Massa, a guy that we've had out here at the KECO numerous times. He got close. 75 69. He ended up plus one, even par. Top 64 exactly were even par or better. So he misses the playoff by one shot. A uh, couple of you guys that made it, Drew Goodman, right on the number at even par, he made it, and also Ben Lorenz. Uh, there wasn't a playoff, which is so sad to me. That's one of the coolest parts about like the U.S. Open qualifying, the USAM qualifying for match play. You always have these. The numbers rarely shake out exactly like they did this time, where there were a, it was a tie for fiftieth, and there were fourteen dudes in the in the tie. They got it all the way down to you know for the top sixty four to be exactly cut at exactly sixty four, but that's the way it happened this time. So match play at the USAM will begin today uh, with a couple of those OU guys there, a couple of the local guys not. What about your Rangers? Are you? I, I just was looking at. It's kind of the probabilities. They are 95% right this second probability to make the playoffs. How confident do you feel 
mm. through 120 games. Very, very confident. The acquisitions in the trade market have worked. They are working. Mentioned it yesterday with um, Scherzer. In his first three starts has been phenomenal. I mean, up there with the likes of, say, Nolan Ryan and his first starts as a Ranger way back in, what, 89? So that's some good company. And then um, Montgomery last night was great. I think he had about nine or six strikeouts. Can't remember. Um, in a win. Uh, between those two, I believe they are three, four. Like four and one. Four and one. Yeah. So it's working. Uh, Evolde is about to come back. He's been doing some light workout or that's gradually uh, uh, increasing in the bullpen. From what I read yesterday, he'll do batting practice workout, and I expect him back in the rotation. And I mean, the rotation is almost. I mean, the bats are hot. The bats are great. Simeon and Seager are awesome. Crossing my fingers for uh, Heim and um, Young to get back in time for maybe a push in September. But to answer your question, 100% confident of the playoffs. Um, my goal, personal goal, is win the West. You know, I, and every time you think Houston's making a push, the Rangers push back and they get a couple wins, and, and Houston would drop one here and there. Um, so, I mean, Rangers taking advantage of a semi week stretch of scheduling right here with Oakland sweeping them, going two and one in San Francisco. Only almost stole that third game on Sunday on the verge of sweeping a, a lifeless Angels team. So they're winning the games they should win. The, and what's great, what I really enjoy is sometimes you'll see a hot team that starts the year. I mean, it's a fine example is Tampa Bay. They started hot everything, and their bats have kind of cooled off. The Rangers, once they're starting to get more healthy, the bats are coming back. That's encouraging. So I'm 100% positive or confident they'll make the playoffs. That's not a worry for me. The, the one, only If I'm worrying about anything is losing the West. And every time I worry about that, they do what I just said. They push back on the, on the Astros, and they just kind of keep them right there at arm's length. But there's still a lot of games to play between now and, and uh, the end of the season. But um, it's encouraging. And, I mean, the only question is, is how far could they go in the playoffs? For me, I mean, where do they line up? Uh, I've seen potential matchups if the season ended today and all that stuff. I mean, there's there's a road there that could get them in the ALCS, and who knows after that. But I watched a little bit of uh, – I mean, if you're talking the best team in baseball, I, watch, uh, I mean, Atlanta is awesome. Mm-hmm. I watched some of them last night against the Yankees, and they are they are great. Um you know, and then there's going to be Houston in the playoffs. They're a different animal than they are in the regular season. Same thing with the Dodgers. So I think those between Dodgers, Atlanta, and I think the two best AL teams can, I mean, Tampa Bay, like I said, has cooled off. I mean, the two best could be the Rangers and Astros. I think it's interesting with the Rangers and also Baltimore. Baltimore, I'm sorry, I forgot well, about just Baltimore. A couple of teams. Are that, we believing in them? Well, uh, why are we believing in the Rangers? Yeah, that's true. You know, a couple of teams that just kind of haven't been there in a while. Um, with different Baltimore's ca- been a long time since yeah. they've been relevant. I wonder, just, is there any chance we see Jackson Holiday? You know, I don't know. He's it's, hitting 380 in double A. Do they need him? Well, why, why not bring him up? Because you don't want to crush a 19 year old kid's confidence in the heat of a pennant race. Yeah. But I mean, 380 in double A. I mean, every single ranking all of a sudden, especially over the say after the last month or so, every ranking of, of minor league prospects you see, he's number one in every single one of them. I think that's an interesting call for for Baltimore. But right now it doesn't seem like you'd need him. You know, whatever need him you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think that'll be kind of a fun ancillary story to watch to see if he may you know get a get a cup of coffee at the end of the at the end of the regular season see what he does and heck who knows wouldn't that be crazy a dude was playing high school baseball a year ago and now he could be in the right in the midst of a pennant race it's it's nuts how far he's gone someone like that and it takes some a couple of years to navigate their way through the farm system to get called up, but he was the one number one pick. He was. So there's a reason for that, and there's a lot of number one picks that they they kind of get the fast track up to the bigs. So that is fun. I mean, I 
but I don't know. I'm with you. I don't know if uh, you want to bring them up to you know. Yeah, just in the just throw them in the. I mean, there's there's one thing throwing them in the fire. This is throwing them straight up in the sun, in the furnace of a pennant right. race and everything. And, and then it goes back to my question: Do they even need to bring them up? Yeah, do I they, mean, I don't. Do they need them? I, I'm like, we got a text. I leave him down. Let him keep just building confidence, building confidence. Now, and careful then you'll when see you him. talk about the Orioles. We could get suspended for yeah. a couple weeks. Oh, we need yeah. to be careful here. Be nice. We got to be nice about the. By Orioles. the way, do you know who Texas has next? This weekend. Is it the Orioles? No, it's my Brewers. Oh, hey, fine. My Brewers, Jared. You've got three. I go three games at a time. It's Labor Day. There's, there's only one three series more I'm really concerned yeah. about. It's Labor Houston. Day. Yeah. And that will be in Texas. You got a bunch of games with Seattle. Seattle's toward, a good team. toward the end. Yeah. Anyhow, that's uh, baseball's good stuff. The Braves are like historic offensively. Oh, they're great. I mean, just ripping the cover off of it. But, you know, it's funny because sometimes making those moves at the trade deadline works. Sometimes they're kind of meh, and sometimes they don't work at all. Well, just look at the Angels. It didn't work. It, well. It's not it's, working. Now, let's. we need to go. We're going to need to go back and play the audio. Because do you think right now the Angels wish they'd have listened to me? Trade them? Yes. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. They have fallen off the cliff, man. Clear off the cliff. But I'll stand on it. I, I don't blame them not trade. It's it's Otani. Hard to trade away the one of the or if not the best players of all time. Will you be able to make us a case by now to the end of the year that uh Seeger should be the MVP? Hard to his numbers the are AL, phenomenal. In the AL, man, if there wasn't a guy named Otani, I'd be right there. Otani, Otani's kind of cooled off. The Ranger pitching's made him look semi. I think he has one hit in two games, but it's hard again. Otani was he won that thing a long time ago? Feels like with with what month did he go crazy? Was it June? So you're sitting 350 nuts. with 22 bombs, 73 RBIs, 1.075 OPS. I'm just, I'm not even going to call you a homer if you try to make that. It's not going to work, but he's been incredible. We got to vote for Kyle Tucker. Yeah, it's going to be Otani. It's going to be Otani. You think that you think the city of New York is tired of seeing the Braves? Good grief! There's a streak there in New York that is a, in. They're dangerous. It's a winning. They have a winning season streak of how many years in a row? The Yankees. It's the Yankees. Oh my gosh! And they're in danger of losing it. They're five hundred right now after losing last night. Uh, there, if there's any hope of them making playoffs, I think that's gone out the door. I, I think it's done. They are what six and a half back. They're going to have to put an incredible push, make an incredible run here. But there is you have to look up the streak. It goes back to there's twenty some years of so, winning baseball, at least winning records for the Yankees, and they're they're in danger of losing it. Boone's done from the text line. How much longer is Boone? I just thought of that this morning. I think he's done. Why? Why? Because they're so short sighted in New York, where they're just going to be like, okay, they're had a losing just for what I said. If they have a losing <laughs> record, you're the guy who lost us a, a streak here. You're done. Um, does Brian Cashman have naked pictures of the Steinbrenners or something? How in the hell is he? Oh, he, yeah. he never gets in trouble for any of this, and he's the one that constructs the team. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's Good always grief. the managers always get the axe. For I don't know guy. why he's so untouchable. Yeah. By the way, the Braves fifty-seven to twelve. They're five and one against the Yanks and the Mets with one more game against the Yankees tonight. That is pounding people. But I think it'll be I mean, obviously Otani will be the story of the offseason. And where he goes, what he's gonna do. Well what they're doing now is not helping their case keeping them. Yeah, look at their lineup. The Yankees are no good. 
Yeah, that's Brian Cashman's fault. Maybe Aaron Boone should throw Brian Cashman out of a game when he's getting ejected one of these times. We'll be back. College Football Top 100 next. It's almost here. In motion is Patton. It's going to be that trap play to Garbarino up the middle. That's a 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Big Elks! Cooper Garbarino, 77 yards. We're closing in on the start of Big Elk football, which means Big Elk TV will be on the air before you know it. Wynn and Garza are the running backs. Jones under center. Austin, snap, turn, hand off to win. Jaden piles toward. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. You'll be able to watch and see if Coach Maynard's brown and white clad Elks can continue their winning ways. Snap back, play action, lobs it toward the end zone. He's got a man. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. Tucker Garza. To get your business on the Big Elk TV screen, call 225-9696 or stop by our office at 220 South Pioneers. The Skinny on Sports. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Question on the text line if the Angels don't win with Trout and Otani the next five years, what are the ramifications of spending that money? I don't know if there are any. In that LA market, with the local TV money that is generated, I, I don't know if there are any. They just, it's like they print money. Them and the Dodgers both. With the way those TV deals are set up, you know, they just fire it to somebody else, I guess. But, man, it is amazing to have those two generational type guys and not just luck out into having a good season once. Well, I mean, like even Trout. I mean, yeah. Trout's been there forever. Yeah. And he's made the playoffs one time. They've been, and it goes even before Trout, they've got, gotten named guys. You know, I always call – I'm calling you – know, I've. it's the curse of Josh Hamilton when they went and got him and then that he couldn't produce. They went and got – Pujols. Pujols, and he – was on the tail end of his career. He didn't really uh, produce like he did in St. Louis. And then and now this, it's it's crazy. So it's not like they have – you know, Rendon. They, it's not like they haven't tried to get these name guys, these stars that have produced elsewhere or, or get them. Like, I mean – are we calling it lucky that they found Trout? I don't know. It's amazing to me. You're right. It's amazing. They have all these – they'll get big-name stars, and they just cannot get in the playoffs. They just cannot win. No, yeah. I don't know if that's a result of just bad chemistry, uh, uh, the division, if they were in a different division. Would that matter? I don't know what it is. It's crazy. It's Trout uh, – yeah, Trout is a 1 million percent first ballot Hall of Famer. Of course. No yeah. doubt about I it. I got – yeah. No doubt about it. Uh, don't forget, Skinny on Sports and Western Oklahoma Realty teamed up for the College Pick'em Contest once again this season. We've got a link on our Facebook page. I'll reshare that uh, today or tomorrow, um, and it'll just click it. It takes you right to our group. Picking against the spread all season long. Cash money is the prizes. 400 for first, 200 for second, three or 100 for third, and then 100 bucks for whoever is the worst picker but picks all the games. Pretty good stuff. Uh, Western Oklahoma Realty. People before property is their motto. 225-6271 is their phone number. Give Tyler, Robbie, all the gang a call down there at Western Oklahoma Realty. Speaking of college football, Jared, top 100 list from the ESPN writers was put out on the website yesterday morning. Reading kind of how this, how they compiled this list, it's pretty interesting. Um, Ryan McGee writes kind of how it happened. So basically what they would do is you'd get a series of, of guy versus guy votes. So you would get, you know, say, let's say 10 on a sheet of paper where it was this guy versus this guy. Who's just, who's better him or him, him or him. And then over 10,000 votes later, the results were compiled and that's how this list came about. So it kind of gives you the methodology of how this was determined. Okay. Kind of a mono and mono style over and over and over throughout most of the summer. And the list spits out Caleb Williams at number one. 
obviously the, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, assumed first pick in the draft. All we we know about how good he is. My question is this: In your mind, is Caleb Williams really the best player in college football? I hard to go against it. To be honest with you, uh, there's I think there's arguments for someone like Marvin Harrison, uh, the wide wide out at Ohio State. He he's poised to have like a huge breakout year. Uh, that we've seen, you know, from the wide receivers at Alabama, even Oklahoma. Um, but it's hard to go against the reigning Heisman winner for me and, and the guy that, and it says it right here, is already more or less locked up the number one ov- overall pick. That just screams at you, best overall player in college football. But I think you feel different. So who who do you think could it be? Or why not Caleb Williams? Maybe don't give me a who, but why not? Why not Caleb? Williams? I don't think it automatically has to be a quarterback. I just don't. And is he phenomenal? Absolutely. <clears throat> There's no doubt about that. But it's just as far as a pure football player. See, that's what it means to me. Who's the best player? And, and so then you got okay. How much better is this guy at his position than this guy? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think there's two guys that are better football players than Caleb Williams. And they're the two guys right below it. Brock Bowers and Marvin Harrison Jr. I think are better football players than Caleb Williams. Do they affect the game in different ways? Sure. And the one thing about Caleb is he has the ball in his hand every single play. And so he kind of gets to dictate – Hit on his terms, but I think there's times where that's a bad thing too. But when you <clears throat> when you just watch the game, Brock Bowers and Marvin Harrison Jr. just r- leap off the page. I think it'd be I think it's a pretty easy argument to make that Georgia doesn't win the national title a year ago if Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't knocked out of the game in the Sugar Bowl. That's Ohio right. State was completely in control of that game, and he gets hit in the end zone <clears throat> in the middle of the third quarter, and things completely change. And so, uh, just as pure football players, yeah, people forget that. Yeah, I forgot that. I mean, that's you know, the, the that that was a big reason watching that game, and probably two prisoner of the moment by everybody me. remembers the miss or field goal yeah. but no one remembers yeah that's a good CJ one. stroud was carving that defense and a big part of the reason why was marvin harrison jr 77 catches 1263 yards 14 touchdowns and those two guys here's the thing those two guys feel to me like guys that you can game plan around to stop and you still can't and you could probably say that, but we've seen how you slow down Caleb Williams. Rush three, drop eight. <laughs> yeah, you know we, yeah. we've seen how to how to slow them down. Outside of taking the taking Marvin Harrison out of the game, how do you slow him down? I don't know that there's an answer to that question yet. And so that's where I mean maybe it's a little bit too much devil's advocate because looking for a different answer than the obvious. But when you watch those other two dominate from those different positions the way that they do that's where i would have a, an argument for those other two guys um that's a good argument who do you think's the first guy from the big 12 and I, like I said, I scrolled through this. I couldn't remember. Now, you, you're right. Someone would probably, I, you know, Ewers might come to mind. Um, I, names are, I'm horrible with names. So maybe a lineman from Kansas State. That's him. I know they got an anchor there. Is yeah, their, BB. Their center? Cooper BB. He's a guard. Guard. Okay. I mean, how much of an indictment is that on the Big 12? No offense, conference, but your best player is a guard at number 27 on the list. I mean, 
I think he's a good player, whatever. But I, how shocking is it that Quinn Ewers isn't on this list? Yeah, that is, that is for a team, the quarterback on the team that's favored to win the conference, and he's not considered one of the top 100 players in the nation. Feels like a little bit of an overlook. Or is it? Or is it the truth? And the rest, the rest of this other stuff is all hype. Going back, falling back on the show us Texas. Well, here's what he's done. I mean, I think missing out on this list is way more in the right lane than him being the third favorite for the Heisman Trophy. See, to me, that's the part that's crazy, is the hype that's surrounding him for what he's done. Now, that doesn't mean he can't just explode, and he, and he very well could. But I'm going to have to give a little kudos to these guys voting on this list to do that. I mean, because if you if you look at all the preseason stuff in the Big 12 or whatever else, you know, it's Ewers, Ewers, Ewers. And then you look at a list like this, and there's, what, two or three Big 12 quarterbacks on here, and he isn't. And Jalen Daniels, you the first one? Yeah, 44. From Kansas. Gabriel's number 60. I was he did have the might. stats, Gabriel. I mean, there's always the one stat. Everyone falls back on that six and seven. Yeah, Will Howard, 87th, Kansas State quarterback. Okay. I was thinking that there was three. Oklahoma with two players, Stutzman at 51, Gabriel at 60. I just got a text about think you know Stutzman is a guy that a lot of people think really started to come on. I'm one of them. If you go back and watch the Florida State game, he just looked like a different player than he did. I mean, I, I get it. He led the conference in tackles. And I've heard Jim say this. Well, how important were some of those tackles when they're five, six, seven yards down the field at the linebacker spot? It felt like in the Florida State game, that was a different player than we had ever seen so far at Oklahoma with Stutzman flying all around the field. I felt like he was the big – I mean, he was big in that Iowa State game. I know he had that pick. Every time Iowa State was on offense, almost every series, you heard Stutzman's name in some form or capacity. Yeah, that's why I felt in the Florida State game. Yeah. Where, it, I mean, when a play needed to be made, he was the one making it, but not only making it, making it on the part of the field that you're supposed to, meaning closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, having a more nose for the football. Instincts were getting better. That's what's exciting, I guess, for me, for the defense, bringing in McCullough, Second year under Stoops, excuse me, Venables. And how much does that free up Stutzman even more? Yeah. You know, more on the one on one opportunities to make some tackles. Well, knowing it, creating more gaps. Yeah. No, knowing it and not thinking it is a huge part of that. Uh -huh. How crazy is it that Kansas has the exact same amount of players in the top 100 list as Oklahoma? I just showed you. How Actually, no. I take that back. I didn't scroll far enough down. Kansas has more. They've got three yeah. guys. Yeah, clearly Kansas is on the way up. Isn't that wild? New stadium, kind of right renovations. And they're about to take the Big 12 by storm. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. D you Did you sense my sarcasm? That's just, it's pretty wild. Kansas, yeah. Mangino days are back. Who is somebody on this list that you think is too low? Wow, I mean, it's such a big list. I've got two. Who do you got? Uh, at number 28, Dallas Turner, defensive end, Alabama. You know, last year when everybody was focusing in on Will Anderson, he was that other monster on the other side making all the plays. I think he's got to be in the top 20 somewhere with what he's done. And then, and this is purely the coaching staff and Stillwater's fault that Colin Oliver is only the 75th player ranked on this list. That dude is way better than that. But it's impossible to be able to show it when you only get to play about 30 plays a game. Hopefully that changes for him because if it does, I think you're going to see a guy shoot up the list with his play this season. I, I th I, I've said it before. 
I think he's the best player in the Big 12, regardless of position. I think it's Colin Oliver. We just don't know it yet because OSU's coaching staff wouldn't put him in the damn game. It's crazy that they wouldn't put him in the game. Hopefully that changes with the change of defensive coordinator, different kind of style of defense. I think you're going to get to see just how athletic that guy really is, kind of standing him up, moving him to an outside linebacker spot, but still able to rush the passer like we saw he could do as a freshman at OSU. So a name that came to mind, I'm wondering, when I scroll down, I'm looking for him, and when I continue to scroll down and scroll down, I'm kind of shocked that he's this low. Is Xavier Worthy at 59? When I see some wide receivers above that mark, I think he's a guy that's that probably makes Ewers look good. You know, maybe why people put Ewers in their Heisman conversation because of the team around him and the potential for them to win, and he's a big reason why. So at 59, I feel like he could be a little higher than that. I mean, I don't know how high, but if you ask me who's too low, maybe that, maybe maybe him, Xavier Worthy. In the same fashion, who is too high? <clears throat> uh, I had one picked out, and it was really high. Let me go up there so I remind myself. It was... Um, Oh, where'd you go? Oh, the uh, uh, Jordan Travis, Florida State quarterback. The guy was on just reading on this. I didn't know this. He was wanting to um, swap positions, and they kept him there at quarterback. Had a good year last year that they feel like is going to springboard them up into national contention this year. Well, he did it against the ACC. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like at number eight, Jordan Travis might be a little too high. How about you? I don't know. His stats are pretty good. I mean, and I could easily – I could, I'm sorry, let me finish my thought. I can easily feel comfortable trading Jordan Travis with Bo Nix or even Jaden Daniels. They're at 14 to 15, respectively. Yeah. Is Jordan Travis better than Bo Nix and Jaden Daniels? We're going to find out on Sunday, September the 3rd, right right off the bat. Yeah. It's LSU. See, a guy at number 30, and I know that his stats are pretty good and he's gotten better each year. Feels like he's hurt a bunch, but it feels like to me it's it's more hype than actual substance is KJ Jefferson, quarterback at Arkansas. I mean, he's huge, he can run, he's got a cannon for an arm. All the all the tangibles are there. But it just seems like there's something always missing with that guy. Like he's 30, and Jalen uh, Jalen Daniels is 44, quarterback at Kansas. And if you gave me a choice, I would take Jalen Daniels all day long over KJ Jefferson, mm-hmm. even though he's not even even though you shouldn't because of the size and the 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 talent, quote unquote. But I would. You could, I could swap those two on this list easily in my mind, and I know all the reasons why I shouldn't say that, and you know, but it just, just seems like he's either hurt or he's just not quite, just not quite what people think he ought to be. That's just that was the one that I thought, man, that seems a little odd. Do do the, I always go here. Do who, what conference they play in matter to these voters? See, that's what I've, I've like a little bit of disrespect for the for the Big 12s versus the AC or SEC. So they say, all right, well, Jefferson needs to go higher. He plays in a tougher conference. Maybe I see. I wouldn't. I had a question. Does a list like this is it put together to verify, say, the your idea of who's good team wise? So therefore, their players have to be good. You know what I mean? Like, is that a subconscious thing? Like, like you're saying, <clears throat> if you're down to if if you got the question, KJ Jefferson or Jalen Daniels, are you thinking as a voter? Mm, well, I think Arkansas is going to be pretty good. Then it has to be that guy. Instead of literally just thinking about the two players, like I it said, the vote was supposed to. I be. do think there's little of that. And you know, and then if you if you have 
you know, a certain, you have it in your mind ranked team wise a certain way. Do you then start to fill a list like this to validate your opinions on how good the teams are going to be, as opposed to just separating out it out in your mind, player versus player? I think that's just natural that you probably do, honestly, mm-hmm. because it just it helps validate if you think, oh yeah, Utah is like number six in the country. Well, that means Cam Rising has to be one of the top twenty-five or thirty players in the you know. I think that has to enter into your mind, even if you don't mean for it to. And then, of course, any list like this, it seems like there's a natural bias to offensive players. Yeah. There just is a natural bias that way. Because you can't convince me when you look at the top 20, there's only three guys in the top 20, or four guys, I'm sorry, four guys, that play defense. You can't convince me that there aren't more than four of the top 20 best players in college football on the defensive side. But it's hard to, one, quantify that as much maybe, and two, everybody, we see it, and even in the draft. We see offense kind of take precedent over defense a lot of times. It's a cool list. Yeah, it's fun to get you talking, get you excited, and get you familiar with some names. That way you can watch some teams outside the ones you root for and go, oh, that's the guy that was high on that list. Look, he's playing like turds right now. (laughs) Or, oh, that other guy is like, for instance, you you said it, the LSU-Florida State game. Quarterback versus quarterback. I mean, I'm clearly going to be rooting for LSU just so I can sound smart coming in on Monday. Going, yeah, see? <laughs> I told you. See? Or is that a Monday game? It's Sunday. It's a Sunday it's game. It's a Sunday night yeah. game. We're all, well, Tuesday then. You have to come in Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm not going to be here Monday. <laughs> you know who I'm really excited about watching that I haven't seen a ton of yet, but I'm going to try to be intentional about watching play this year? Who's that? Drake May. Yeah. Because there's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm seeing these. I've seen lists that – have him even ahead of Caleb Williams as far as quarterback, and that doesn't make any – my mind doesn't compute that. And so, and you look at his stats, 4,300 yards, 38 touchdowns, scored 45 total, ran for almost 700 yards. I'm going to be way more intentional about watching him. Yeah. Because there's there's well, some people wanting to create a debate about who should be the number one pick between these two guys. Yeah. That's how talented people view him. Well, that that is uh, that's you're right. I'm with you, and that's why I was I haven't checked the line, but they open with South Carolina. That's right. Spencer Sanders, like I keep doing that. Spencer Rattler is way down. It's like in the 90s, right? Yes. But South Carolina was favored, like by a point and a half. It was almost a pick 'em, but they are still favored in that game. Let me here it is. Yeah, still a point and a half. Mm-hmm. Is that the Saturday? Is that on Saturday? Is that even earlier? Saturday. Okay. Six thirty. It's a night game. It might be that. Maybe the marquee might, game. Might on be the Saturday. game to watch. Oh, use that eleven OSU. They play six it. or. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Five or six. All right, we'll be back. Wrap it up here on the Wednesday of the Skinny on Sports. It's almost here. In motion is Patton. It's going to be that trap play to Garbarino up the middle. That's a 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! Big outs! Cooper Garbarino, 77 yards. We're closing in on the start of Big Elk football, which means Big Elk TV will be on the air before you know it. Wynn and Garza are the running backs. Jones under center. Austin, snap, turn, hand off to win. Jaden piles toward. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. You'll be able to watch and see if Coach Maynard's brown and white clad Elks can continue their winning ways. Snap back, play action, lobs it toward the end zone. He's got a man. It's a touchdown for the Big Elks. Tucker Garza. To get your business on the Big Elk TV screen, call 225-9696 or stop by our office at 220 South Pioneer. The 
Skinny on Sports. Ah, first and last, baby! Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal, wrapping up a Wednesday edition. You mentioned a name that I think is very fascinating on this top 100 list, and that is one, Spencer Rattler. Think about just the ups and the downs throughout his career, the roller coaster ride of the Spencer Rattler experience. So he came, what coming into the 2021 season, where would he have been on this list? One, and that goes back to top the five for sure. Of, okay, he's the next quarterback at Oklahoma. They keep going to New York, if not winning the Heisman, coached by the quarterback whisperer Lincoln Riley. Yeah, that that's that goes back to that perception. But then it goes ask it begs the question: that Would he have been deserved to be the number one? So is that where you're going with Caleb Williams? Kind of the same, or just, no, no, just it, because I, of the people behind him? I think it's just a crazy ride. The, oh, that uh, is nuts uh, for of him. The, Sp- yeah. the Spencer Rattler experience. Yeah. From where he was to where he dropped, now at the bottom end of this list, you look at what he did last year. He threw for over 4,000 yards, but he only had 18 touchdowns through 12 interceptions. He had a horrible start, slow start. And you take away the Tennessee game in which they just whipped the Vols 63-38. to He threw six touchdowns in that game. Take away those, he was dead even the rest of the year. It's just a – it's hard to fathom everything that's happened to him. From literally looking like the Heisman – he was the Heisman Trophy favorite, maybe even the number one overall pick going into the 21 season. Doesn't even make it – what, five games as the starter at OU? And now trying to resurrect some sort of draft stock back in his final season at South Carolina. It's just pretty, it's pretty crazy, the, the, the 30 for 30 that can be shown about him, <clears throat> good or bad. Anything else that kind of struck you about this list? I'll tell you, for me, it was the lack of Big 12 guys. There's just not very many of them on here. And and the ones that are, are kind of, are in the back half. There's only two in the top 50. BB and Daniels. Only having two guys from Oklahoma, only one guy from Oklahoma State. It It kind of feeds into the narrative of, well, yeah. This is why they're not what what they've been yeah and i i also look at without looking at this list and counting them up but the new teams coming in i mean they were outside of byu was independent but the other three were in a g5 conferences they weren't it's not like they're producing a bunch of top end talent so it's kind of a transitioning thing. There's the perception of the Big 12. All that stuff. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, have a team like, like TCU team, had like eight guys drafted this last year. That too, and then you look at results of last year. You know, obviously OU's lack of success, OSU's lack of success. I think there's always going to be that, well, Texas thinks they're back, but show us. Until you show us, I'm not going to put guys very high on this list. It's still Kansas, although Kansas is well represented. I mean, there's a lot of it. And then sometimes you just go through a year where just not, there's just not players there. Yeah, they're not known yet. They're not known yet, yeah. And, and I mean, I, you go through this list, you look at the, the 2022 ranking, NR, NR, NR. So they could have a great year, and then all of a sudden we're talking about it. I mean, what if – I don't know. I mean, okay, so you're not going to put Jackson Arnold on this list next year, are you? That's, well, that's the – I wonder how much in people's minds are they using what we've actually seen versus what you think is possible. And I would suppose with the way – just with the fact that Quinn Ewers isn't on this list – because we've seen it. Has to yeah. make me think that there's not as much projection going on 
as there is what we've seen. And so if that's the truth, then yeah, there's no way he's he'll be, well, you wouldn't think going into this year there's any way because we won't have seen him. But then, I mean, you, you got to feel it somehow, and I get it, you know, gosh, you got to go to, I still haven't got there yet, where you find somebody that was ranked last year. So you got to fill it somehow. Mm -hmm. And so there's got to be some sort of projecting going on. Otherwise, you don't have a list. You know? Yeah. It's pretty crazy to look. I mean, I'll clear to to in the 50s. And so you're guessing for some guys. Well, Stutzman's the first guy. Well, it doesn't have his ranking. Never mind. Just stats. But anyhow, so may, maybe that will, maybe that does happen toward the end of the, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I think this guy's going to be good, so I'll put him, you know, yeah, here or there. But there's a lot of guys, I mean, a lot of guys on here that weren't. And I, and I, the 2022, is that preseason or end of season? I suppose it's preseason. You'd assume so. Going in, yeah, like going into last year, all right. these guys, which makes a lot more sense because then it's not like a postseason ranking that then you you roll over to starting the next year, and that makes way more sense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> why? Why so many of these guys aren't even on? Weren't even on the rankings, and now they are. Yeah, that's got to be what it is. It's got to be from the – because, well, I mean, a guy like Donovan Edwards, Michigan running back, if the, if there was a list at the end of the season last year, he would have been on it. And here he is, 2022, not ranked. So, that yeah, they're, they're talking about last year's preseason versus this year's mm -hmm. preseason for sure. And so it's not as much guessing as you would think because you, they're taking into account what actually happened last year. And so if that's the case, then, yeah, there's – I mean, Jackson Arnold shouldn't be anywhere near this list – if what we think happens actually transpires throughout the year. Now, if we have another Rattler Williams situation like a couple years ago, <laughs> then yeah, maybe he's on the list. Right. So it's fun to talk about. And you know what's cool? Putting out lists like this just means we're that much closer to the college football actually starting. I mean, heck, what are we, like 10 days? 10 days from Notre Dame Navy and Ireland. It's week zero, week from, yeah. Week from Saturday. Yep. Zero and in. Right there. Even uh, Tebow and Caleb Boy will start on week zero. Oh, they do? San Jose State. There we have a great Wednesday. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening.